Two weeks ago, we listened to Cowboy Carter by Beyonce, and now that we've digested it, we're ready to discuss it. We're going to talk about a few of our standout favorites, and then in the end, we'll list our top three. So this album is kind of broken up into sections. The interludes really kind of help separate it. Yeah, I enjoyed the musical ride that they took yeah. you on. I love the creativity with each one and how it kind of navigated you through the album. I thought it was really innovative. Yeah, I've been getting, you know, country icons, you know, Willie and Dally. Linda Martell. Yeah. So cool. Let's talk about the first section. The first song that it starts with, intro to the album, is called American Requiem. And I really enjoyed the song. I remember when we first listened to it, we were just kind of mesmerized by the journey that it took us on. It kind of transformed itself multiple times. Yeah. And we really, really liked it the first time we heard it. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, the genre bending on this, especially because, you know, a lot of people come in thinking country, and there's only a little bit of country, I feel, feel on this first track. It's really got a lot of, like, soul. Yes. Uh, even, like, you know, gospel with all the harmonies. Uh, what was the instrument in it? The... Oh, a sitar. It's a lot of talking going on. I mean, it was unique because it's not something that you hear all the time in music, and it was so cool. Yeah, it really stands out on this track. It does. The message of this, I think, really sets up the album. Oh, yeah. It's... It was the perfect intro song. Yeah. And especially since this initially was supposed to be the very first right. album of the project, it's a really good intro song. Yeah. The line that really stands out to me is, used to say I spoke to country and the rejection came and yeah. said I wasn't country enough. Like that. I remember hearing that. Used to say I spoke to country and the rejection came and said I wasn't country enough. Really, really good. You know, and then you got Blackbird on this, which is just a great cover of you know, yeah. the Beatles. Perfect cool. cover for this album, and she did it so well. Mm -hmm. I loved that Paul McCartney's foot tapping, which we weren't sure of the first time we heard it. We're like, is that a metronome? Yep. But then <laughs> <laughs> found out that it's the original recording of his foot tapping, keeping the beat while he was uh, recording. Yep, that's awesome. That's so cool. And then the four artists that she brought on really was a nice addition to this song. Love a good Beatles cover. 16 characters. Sixteen Carriages was the second single from this, which looking back, I mean, if I look at this whole list, that was an interesting choice. I love that song, but I feel like there's so many other songs that would have been like radio bops. Ooh, yeah, but I don't think there. she's... Totally. Someone had even mentioned in the comments, or maybe I read that somewhere else, that getting a radio hit isn't her objective no. anymore as an artist. That. It's about creating a good body of work that she's proud of. But as a single. Sure, that's a bonus. Yeah, as a single. Yeah, I think maybe her thought process was showing something since she was mentioning that she was doing a country album right. that was the most country leaning. Because I feel like this one definitely has that country western yeah. sound. Agreed. Yeah, I think you're right with that. Because even though the lead single was very much western country, I think this took it even further. Yeah. Wanna be a protector. Mm -hmm. The next two songs in the album, Protector and My Rose, both dedications to her children. Mm -hmm. very, really beautiful songs. Very beautiful. And yeah, Protector. You know, I love the Protector Projector lines. Me too. Yeah. Really, really good. Clever lyrics. Yeah, very clever. I liked the little feature from her daughter, Rumi, mm -hmm. and, prote and Protector. That was so sweet. I love that. Mom, can I meet you? The war will buy, please. Yeah, very cute. So after My Rose, there's an interlude with Willie Nelson, which kind of takes you into the next part of the album, which has Texas Hold'em, the lead single. This ain't Texas. Ain't no Hold'em. Hey. The smash hit off of this Oh my so gosh. Far. The catchiest song it I is. feel like I've ever heard. <laughs> we were singing it around the house for weeks. <laughs> And then you'd hear it everywhere you went to. Right. So it gets stuck in your head again. The instrumentation is really unique. There's not a whole lot of like bass in the song. There's a lot of treble, which is an interesting choice. I just remember that first time hearing it because I don't know what we were expecting, but it was not 
that. Yeah. Um, we didn't know much we about the know. project the very <laughs> first time that we heard the song. And I guess we heard country. We were expecting what you kind of hear on country music radio today. That pop country. Pop leaning sound Rock and almost. this was just not that and it was really refreshing to hear we enjoyed it a lot yeah really cool I can be your bodyguard. which leads us to bodyguard an absolute bop on this album i love that from the first time i heard it it's just got everything that piano riff there at the beginning with the acoustic guitar And then, the bass. Yeah, and then the funky bass comes in, especially later on. Like the bass even switches up a little bit. Uh huh. Sonically, it sounds yep. so cool. And then this would have been oh. my second single from the album. If I was yeah, there. I mean, I, th- thir- I totally get that. Even. Yeah. She hasn't released a single. I think this could be like a summer hit. If it I had. totally agree with you on that one. It's super catchy. And it's just feel good. Like mm-hmm. vibey song, yeah. like makes me want to drive Relate- with the windows yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this really cool electric guitar part. I want to play it. Mm. Just a really. <laughs> oh, <I'm sure. laughs> Just a really cool way to end that song. Yeah, that Dally P interlude is so funny to me because she references Becky with the good Becky hair. Becky with the good hair, yeah. It's a call back to yeah. that. You know that hosey with the good hair you sang about? Nice to hear Dolly. Mm-hmm. One of those country icons. And we had mentioned in this, in our reaction, that Dolly had wanted her to record this mm-hmm. as a cover for a while now. And so I'm sure she was thrilled. Jolene, 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 Jolene. And what Beyonce did with Jolene was really, really neat. Mm-hmm. I liked the lyric change up. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a cool update. And then her voice on this song is just so fitting for this song because she's got that powerhouse vocals and she sounds so good on this song. Mm-hmm. The build up at the end is really nice with the instrumentation. Yeah, Willie Jones, when he comes in there, sounds really good with her. And I you know, another, another person in the credits. Stevie Wonder on the harmonica. I did read that. (laughs) Really cool. Sounded so good. I love Stevie. If you cross me, I'm just like my father. The vocals are really, really powerful. And to hear her sing like that, you're just like, what can she not do? (laughs) Show off. (laughs) She's so amazing. (laughs) And people have even speculated that X3 could be opera. I'm not convinced. I still think it's going to be rock, but... I mean, she's sure showcasing here that she could do it if she wanted to. Yeah. I just saying, I think it would be it? cool, but I just don't think it'd be well accepted. Not a lot of people listen to opera. No, but I think this album and any album with this project has proved that her fans will show up no matter what she puts out and support her. So I don't think it would really be a problem sales and numbers wise. Yeah. Maybe not going to get radio play, but I think we've already talked about how I don't think that's her goal. The strings on this song, really, really beautiful, and I think it really adds to that operatic sound, makes it bigger and more powerful, and totally. it, it brings in that emotion aspect to it as well. Mm-hmm. Itch in the feels. All the same to me, plain Jean, spaghetti. No sauce, no sauce. Mm. That takes us into spaghetti, which the intro in this by Linda is like perfect for speaking Yeah, taking us album. into the next part section of this album really fitting and i i love that she got her to do this Mm -hmm. this one you can definitely feel the genre starting to switch with this one you hear some rap from Mm -hmm. her in this which was really nice and i felt like a little r&b sound mixed in yeah it does shift here and we didn't realize until after we reacted that yeah This was supposed to be the first act. Well, we knew it was supposed to be the first act, but I didn't put two and two together that that's why the end of it starts to transition into the more house disco pop sound. I even like, I noticed the genre shift, but I didn't then make connect the dots that it's because it originally was supposed to be the first one and transition into Renaissance. So thanks for saying that in the comments. Yeah. It was a big aha moment for me. (laughs) It totally makes sense. 
me as an artist like i couldn't do that like it it would bug me to yeah, know we that, talked now, about that now it doesn't line up like i don't know yeah I would... I, that was my thought too like well then if she knew after sh- that she was going to change the arrangement why didn't she change the arrangement of the songs but i now. bet in her mind she had it the way she wanted yeah. it because it is laid out perfectly so to then go in and re arrange yeah. everything i just don't think i could even flip flop them i would have just released this and accepted <laughs> it. <laughs> I, for me it, it's just hard to hold on to a project that right long. when you're i mean you got to be so excited to release something like this after spaghetti comes alligator tears which kind of takes us back into a more country western sound mm-hmm. it's more acoustic less pop r&b yeah i think she's just kind of mixing it all up here a little bit Then we get on to Just for Fun, which I remember we went into this thing and it was kind of going to be a, upbeat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Just, it's, a, yeah. it's more down tempo, but I really like this song. This song is really good to me. Yeah. It wasn't the sound we were expecting, but it was a whole new sound that I really, really love. The piano melody in this is really nice. Totally agree. And I love once it gets to Willie's feature, it kind of goes back and forth with them, which is really tasty. And I love just the hook of this. Cause time heals everything. I don't need anything. Oh, I love that lyric. It sounds so good. The way she sings it. Yeah, really line. powerful. Really powerful. And I again, he was a nice addition to this song. And it's great build up in this song too. So heavy like the two most wanted in. Next is a duet with Miley Cyrus. Very Thelma and Louise. Yes, I really enjoyed this song. I thought their voices complemented each other so well. Good. And I liked that their voices were kind of, to me, the main driving instrument in this song. It was simplistic sounding on just the instrumental side. And so it really allowed their voices to shine. And they definitely shined. They harmonized so well together. Her kind of rasp with Beyonce's more clean vocal. I don't know. It just sounds really good. I mean, I've always felt like Miley Cyrus's voice was perfect for country, mm. but she's just never really been too yeah. interested in it. But she sounds great on this song. Yep, she's got some country-leaning songs that are great. Yeah, and she kind of started out. She right. had that the climb was technically a country I love song. That song. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it lended itself well to this album being country. Definitely. My favorite line from this is the making waves in the wind with my empty hand. Making waves in the wind with my empty hand. But I just love that because that's so relatable. Like I feel like everybody's done that out the mm-hmm. car window. Just yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out because I don't think I ever really like heard that lyric before. And I did hear the interpolation of landslide the second time I you did. It. Yeah, so it's in the guitar. It kind of starts out with it. I forgot cool. about that being in there. Yeah. Such an iconic song. Great addition. After Two Most Wanted comes Levi's Jeans, another duet with Post Malone. Mm-hmm. Posty. We love Posty on this channel. I thought it was a great duet. The topic was really interesting. <laughs> I it, thought it was cool. It's just what, such a fun song. It is. I love it. Relatable topic. Just about love and intimacy. And the vibe of it. It's kind of a more mellow vibe throughout. It's a really cool vibe. And then in the comments, you guys let us know that Levi's Jeans was one of the first big brands to work with Destiny's Child. And so she was kind of giving them a nod. Yeah. And it, that certainly paid off for them because right. their sales are boosting right now. That's so crazy. It's awesome. <laughs> I hope that you know that once I loved you. The rhythm of the acoustic guitar in the very beginning of this song, I just gotta play it. Let's go for it. Yep, it's nice. Really nice. And it like carries through the whole song. 
I really liked that in the beginning. It was a nice lead into the song. Mm -hmm. Vocals are really good and have a nice flow to them. Same with the rhythm of the guitar, just a really nice flow. It's one of my favorite things about it. And then it has like this kind of Spanish yeah. vibe. That guitar definitely has like a Spanish guitar mm -hmm. feel. Yaya comes next. This one brings big energy. Yeah. And I love the energy of this song. Interpolating good vibrations. Yes. And these boots are made for walking. So cool. It was really neat to hear both of those songs in the same right. song. Yep. It's a strong message, and I really felt like she delivered it mm -hmm. well with the lyrics. One of my favorite lyrics is, I just pray that we don't crash. Keep my Bible on the dash. We got to keep the faith. And she delivers that line so mm -hmm. good. I got I to gotta play it. Yep. <laughs> she delivers that line so good. She delivers all these lines good. Right. What am I saying? <laughs> but that one was the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite line in the song. Yeah, it's a good one. There's an interlude, Oh, Louisiana. Mm. And then comes Desert Eagle. Desert Eagle in the backseat. Everything bigger in Texas. This one had a bit of like a funk. Totally. Funk sound. Yeah, the bass. The bass in the beginning of this. Oh, God. Let's listen to some more music, guys. <laughs> the bass, is, I think it's just in the beginning. That is so cool sounding. Yeah, they got some type of effect on it. Yeah, this is definitely more of a shift into a different sound here. Mm -hmm. You're noticing that as this is kind of transitioning more yeah. into the Renaissance era. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really liked it on the initial listen. I was like, oh, I did not expect this at the end yeah. to go this way. And especially when we hit River Dance, which is the next mm -hmm. song, we're even more into that like Renaissance guitar era. plucking. Yeah, the house music, very repetitive, just that mm -hmm. dance, River Dance. Yeah, I remember <laughs> I was trying to River Dance during it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we showed that. Flip to it here. See? Bounce on this thing. Bounce on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Next comes Two Hands to Heaven. Two Hands to Heaven. Two hands to heaven, wild horses when wild. Really showcasing the power of her voice with yes. this one. Yes. Great flow, great sound. Yeah, very powerful. And then the Tyrant. I really love the beat in this one. It was it's sexy. Total, total groove, yeah. This song has a really great rhythm and flow. I thought it showcased her versatility. There's a lot of blending genres with totally. this one. A lot going on here. A lot going on, but it all kind of works together. There's a part at like 36 seconds. I think it's a violin. Sounds really awesome. Yep. That is sick. At two minutes and 30 seconds, the song kind of switches up. And I mm -hmm. love the sound of her voice here. You to the she hit some soft, mm -hmm. beautiful high notes there, and her voice sounded incredible. Always. And sweet honey bucking. We're getting close to the end here. That's the second yep. to last song. Another really shift in genres on that one. Yeah, that one's <laughs> that's an interesting one. The drums are cool on this. And then Amen, just a beautiful way to kind of cap off the album here. Really, really beautiful song. It's got that choir in it mm -hmm. that just really makes it that much more powerful. Mm -hmm. Kind of, like you said, just really closes off the album. It even like calls back to the first song in the lyrics, yep. I think, a little bit. Yeah, with the Amen, because she says that in the first track as well. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that. Really beautiful message. This whole project... I think was extremely innovative, mm -hmm. super creative, and I thought she did it really well. The genre bending, the you know, pushing out of boxes that you're put in, it's just, you gotta respect all of it. And I also respect, you know, she was like a vocal producer on this. She was heavily involved in the project, clearly. 
it wasn't just like somebody told her to come in and do these things like this is definitely feels like her baby which mm -hmm. i love that yes fully invested and i have a lot of appreciation for that mm -hmm. a lot of respect a lot of respect for her for doing this i know we had talked about in the last one that we were really anxious to hear the album all the way through because mm -hmm. when we listened to it together for the first time we had to stop it to kind of talk in between so we didn't hear the full experience that it was intended mm -hmm. what did you think after you heard it the way it was supposed to be oh this definitely grew on me and i love that aspect of all the transitions at some point i was like wait am i still listening to that yeah, song same yeah, thing like, happened to me multiple times yeah. I was like whoa i'd be like three songs later and be like <laughs> i didn't even realize that the song had changed like right. it all works together so flows. well flows so beautifully mm -hmm. and the interludes for me just <laughs> just really i just i just love them and like I mentioned before, just navigates you, guides you through the album, takes you on this amazing journey. And I'm so glad that she released this this year. Yep. Solid, solid album. And what's she going to do next? Yeah. 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 Is it going to be rock? <laughs> Is it going to be opera? Rap? Let us know what you guys think. This is going to be hard for me. Okay. I don't have a top three. I have like a top five or six. Uh, I, I get it. What, Do you want to start? Yeah, let me go with the honorable mentions first. I mean, American Requiem, I love that being the intro, how it sets up the album, just the sound of it, just really nice. And then, you know, Protector, I feel, gets stuck in my head a lot, just that hook. <laughs> Ryan's had that song stuck in his head for so long. He's been singing it around and the house. Call me out on that. And then, then I get stuck singing it. <laughs> Yeah, and then Tyrant, I love. I mean, it was just a different vibe. Totally. I really love that bass in it. It's so groovy. Can't not dance to that. It's definitely one of my honorable mentions as well. Okay. Those are my honorable mentions. What about yours? Tyrant's one of them. Like you said, super cool vibe with that one. Levi's Jeans mm -hmm. is one of my favorites. Just because it's fun. It's lighthearted. Totally. It's something relatable. And Post Malone's on it. Yeah, yeah I liked they're like i believe they harmonize at the end i like they're harmonizing together at the end their voices sound great together my other honorable mention is texas hold'em yeah i mean super catchy another really fun song and it's kind of the memory of the first time we heard it mm -hmm. that makes me like the song so much because it is a fun memory for me yeah that was cool so my number three is just for fun is that surprising at all it's not surprising <laughs> okay. because it's in my top three as well. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have been, I feel after the first listen, it probably wouldn't have been my choice, but it really grew on me the more Same. and more that I heard it. I don't know, it's just something about it just sound really good. Mm -hmm. The melodies in it, that piano, just those slow, mm, it just emotional. And I like the message. Right, and you know me, I usually don't lean towards the slower songs, mm -hmm. but... It just, it's such a feel good song, the way that it sounds. I don't know mm -hmm. why. I kept finding myself hitting repeat on that one every time it would play. So it's definitely in my top three. Yep. And her voice, she sings a bit deeper on it. I hope that's maybe why it stands out a little bit more. She doesn't hit a lot of high notes, it's more of a lower, calm emotion. My number three is Two Most Wanted. Yeah. Featuring Miley Cyrus. Okay. Again, another, I think the memory attached with this one, I was listening. I wasn't supposed to really listen to anything yet, but I saw it and I hit play in my <laughs> car and I listened to like 30 seconds of it and I was blown away. And so I immediately hit stop so I wouldn't hear the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's just, it's really good. I, again, I love that it really lets their voices shine. Mm -hmm. And they have amazing voices. One thing I love about Beyonce is that she has this incredible voice that she can use as this amazing instrument in so many ways. And it really is shown off in this song. Totally. Yep, that's a great one. And, and yeah, the theme of it that Thelma and Louise, mm -hmm, the and visuals that throughout ride the whole or thing. die. Yeah. It's, it's a cool song. Yep. Yeah great love song with great story and great visuals and great vocals and that's why it's my number two is it <laughs> yeah it is 
I like Miley. I'm a Miley fan. So I guess ours are kind of flip-flop because my number two is just for fun. Okay. <laughs> I hey. really, I, I rock with that song. It's mm. just so good. So what's your number one? So my number one is Bodyguard, obviously. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It's just why so do, good why feeling. Do you, why do you say, yeah. I love it. I mean, there's nothing bad about it. You can throw it on at any time. Feel good song. Even though, I mean, the topic definitely feels like somebody's trying to take her man or like she's trying to protect him from these other women is the, my take on it but yeah as far as the message it's interesting and yeah it's just really cool so my number one is yaya what that is, i would have never guessed that that's what i told you earlier i was like i think you're gonna be surprised by my choices yeah I and mean, it's good i just never thought you would think that's the best one. it's got so much energy it and you can feel it build, and she delivers it so good. I like I mentioned that line that I just love, and I jam to that song. It's got such a good beat. I love those descending notes, almost like surfer rock. That really awesome. Appreciate you guys listening to our thoughts on this. Let us know what your guys' favorite songs are in the comments below. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Later.